Hi guys, Jamie Humphreys here for Six String Alliance, and today we are taking a look at the Kramer 84. So I am very excited to have this guitar in my hands. This is the newest guitar to my ever growing collection. Now, for those of you that are new to my channel, um, you might not know that I am a huge Van Halen fan. Those of you that have followed me uh, longer throughout my career through all my Lick Library stuff, you will know how much of a Eddie Van Halen fan I am. In fact, my main guitar for the last 23 years has been the Music Man Axis and the Music Man EVH model. That guitar absolutely changed everything for me when it came out in the early 1990s and it remains for me the greatest guitar that was ever designed and built and for me it is just a fantastic instrument i love that guitar but that guitar owes a lot to this guitar for a number of reasons now I'm going to uh, uh, put a slight disclaimer in place here. Um, when it comes to guitars and guitar history, I am not much of a cork sniffer. Uh, and I use that term with the greatest respect to people who really do immerse themselves in this kind of stuff. I have had the same sort of issues with my, uh, my kind of Brian May connection. You know, people really go deep, deep into Brian May's gear and sound. And it's the same with Eddie, you know, getting the correct pieces of tape and you know what screws and blah 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 and that's great if that's your thing that's perfect but for me i'm a little bit more about just picking the thing up and playing it whilst i do find that eddie's influence has changed the way that i play guitar and it has also shaped my choices so what i'm going to try to do today is to give some as accurate information as i can decipher um from what i've sort of sort of scourged through different links and things that I've read and people that I've spoken to regarding Eddie's relationship with Kramer. Now, when I say that the Music Man had a lot to owe to this guitar, the Music Man was a direct result of Eddie's love for his 5150 guitar. He had a very strong tie to that guitar, the shape of the neck. In fact, Eddie uh, credits um, or he credited, should I say, Kramer for the neck design of the Music Man because they took the neck of the 5150 uh, Kramer and they scanned it. It was an asymmetrical neck, uh, neck that was uh, designed for him by a gentleman called Paul Anker. And he was actually, this was the first asymmetrical neck, meaning it was sort of thicker on the base side and thinner on the top string side. So it had a little bit more of a worn in and natural feel when you hold it. And that's something when you pick up a music man, you, you really feel that on the guitar. It's just a great neck. But the other thing about the 5150 guitar was the bridge pickup. And I've done a lot of research on this and a lot of people saying different things. And I've kind of gone with um, the Damasio recount of this tale. I've had a uh, what, 18, 19 year relationship with DiMarzio and no Steve Blucher personally. And he was the one that designed the pickups in the Music Man Eddie Van Halen guitar. And apparently the bridge pickup that was in the 5150 guitar was a broken um, a, a Seymour Duncan JB pickup. Now, Eddie apparently said that the string, the top string got caught underneath the bobbin on a gig. And after that point, the pickup sounded different. And there's a fantastic article that you can download from the Damasio website that really goes into detail of all the readings that they took from this pickup. So 
That pickup in the 5150, after reading many different accounts, that pickup was a JB, and that is according to Damasio. So when they set about designing the Music Man, uh, as uh, as Larry Damasio said to Eddie Van Halen, right, we're going to build you a broken pickup. They very much based the feel and the sound of the Music Man on this guitar. So let's talk a little bit about Eddie's relationship with Kramer, and I will do my best to get this right. I have as I said, I've sifted through so much information. The relationship started in the early 80s and Eddie had put some Kramer necks on the original Frankie and that is apparent in certain pictures you can see from early 80s tours. But he was obviously becoming kind of upset with many guitar companies ripping off his design. Obviously, when he came out with the Frankenstrap, that was it. Everyone was producing single pickup, uh, uh, single humbucker super strats with, with Floyd's. He completely shaped the, the way that we look at rock guitar. And it was inevitable that he was going to wind up working with a company and he ended up going to Kramer. So the first time that we actually see Eddie holding a Kramer guitar is in that famous advert where he appears to be holding a Frankenstrat. It has the neck single coil. It has the five-way switch nailed to the middle of the, uh, of the guitar body. It has the offset neck humbucker. But the guitar, the body of that apparently was not a Kramer body. It was a Walker body. Now, Eddie wanted to produce more of a signature guitar based on his Frankenstrat, but apparently Kramer didn't feel that that was a feasible project to undertake. The neck on that guitar in that advert is allegedly the neck that Paul Anker built for him, which is the asymmetrical neck. I think this is what I have uh, of... Um, deduced from from uh, from the information that I've read. And we see the hockey stick headstock. Now, Eddie really liked the headstock of his Ibanez Destroyer guitar. And so apparently Paul took a regular beak headstock and attached wood on it to make this version of the headstock. Now, following on from that Kramer guitar, which uh, Kramer felt it wasn't a viable project to embark on, Eddie started work on a new guitar, which is the guitar that we see here. And that is the guitar that we famously see him playing through that period, which was a Kramer Pacer body. I have to get that right. Now, a lot of people think it was a Beretta. It wasn't. The Beretta actually came after the 5150 guitar. It was very much inspired by that guitar. Now, there are various Kramers that Eddie used. There is actually a, a lot of Kramers with different headstocks and different body shapes. There are uh, Berettas with the Beretta headstock and with trans trems in. There are loads when you, uh, when you go down this rabbit hole. But probably the most famous ones that you see Eddie with are are, obviously, there's the one in the advert, which is a great looking guitar, which is the Kramer take on the original Frankenstrat. We have the 5150 guitar, which is the one that Eddie played uh, a hell of a lot. We have the Hot for Teacher guitar, which has an offset bridge uh, humbucker. And we also have the 1984 guitar. So now let's move on to the 84. Now, Kramer Guitars has been under the umbrella of the Gibson Corporation for several years. And I've been doing a little bit of work on the Gibson app, doing some teaching, and I was playing a Beretta. And then a conversation started. I spotted the 84 and was like, is that the Van Halen guitar? And uh, they very graciously sent one to me. I've been incredibly uh, excited to get this guitar because it kind of fills a hole in my collection, if you like. You know, I've got my Frankie, now I've got the 84 and my EVH Music Mans. I'm such a nerd, I need to get all of the Van Halen guitars. So let's look at the body. First of all, the body is the design of the 84, which is based on that old Kramer Pacer. Single pickup in the bridge. No, it's not offset, but Eddie's one was not offset. That was on the Beretta that we see that. That was, I guess, based on Eddie's original design. The Beretta actually came, as I said, it came after that 5150 guitar. This body is made out of alder as opposed to the uh, poplar, which the original was made out of. We have a Floyd Rose tremolo system on here. This is a really good Floyd, actually. We'll talk about this in a moment. Single volume control, which if you pull that up, it's uh, we have a series parallel option on this pickup. Moving on to the neck, uh, 22 frets. These are medium to jumbo size frets. This is a maple, maple neck and fretboard, and it is a 
<clears throat> it is a, like a shallow C profile, so it's quite comfortable in the hand. I prefer a little bit more meat on the neck. The Beretta neck is, uh, is a little bit more comfortable for me. It's a little bit thicker and chunkier. I kind of wish they'd gone with that asymmetrical de uh, design, which uh, obviously was on Eddie's original. That would have been really, really cool. It's a 12-inch radius, and it's fender scale length. And then obviously we have that iconic headstock, which is based off of the design that uh, Eddie and Paul Anker came up with, which was inspired by his old Ibanez. The guitar that I have is finished in matte white. I kind of I went for that uh, that finish because I thought it would uh, age a little bit nicer, and I always kind of associate these guitars looking a little bit worn and a little bit a uh, little bit used. So I thought it was uh, it's a really beautiful finish, and I have to say. The whole guitar is incredibly well finished. Okay, so let's have a listen to some tones. I'm plugging into my uh, Mesa Badlander and I'm coming out of the Cab Clone IR, the onboard Cab Clone IR, and I'm using a 4x12 impulse response. So that's a 4x12, the oversized uh, Mesa 4x12 cab. So let's have a listen. <laughs> just a guitar that's built for rock really it's a, a fantastic feeling guitar um i just want to point out a little bit about the setup when it came the setup was 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 great you know it played very well but for me it was uh, the string gauge was a little bit light i'm just really heavy-handed and i really hit the guitar harder so i set this guitar up with uh 10 to 52 gauge strings which is my standard gauge I've been experimenting with 10 to 48s, which I actually put on the Beretta, which felt really nice, but this took the 10 to 52 well. Obviously had to do a little bit of adjustment with the, the bar, but I always like to have my whammy bars so that I can uh, play the G string. And uh, I'm getting just over a whole tone there, but normally I like a, a whole tone pull up on there. I'm just a little bit uh, up, a little bit sharp of that on that pull up. But as you can hear, the, the bar... It does it, you know, it's got all of the, you can do all of the tricks with that. It's a really responsive tremolo system. I haven't taken any springs out. I've still got three springs in this. I've just gone up um, to this hybrid set of 10s, if you like, that I like to use, just using the 10 to 52s. I adjusted the height a little bit, measured it, and got it uh, feeling you know, comfortable for the way that I like to play, and then just adjusted the bridge so it's... Uh, I don't know if you can see it there. You can't really see that, but it's sitting nice and flat to the body. So uh, a really nice uh, whammy bar. So... Um, it's incredibly comfortable to play. The other thing that uh, I mentioned before was the uh, the push uh, the, the the push pull pot. So I, I find this a little hard to sort of distinguish the differences between it with a higher gain. <laughs> You can hear a difference there when I'm pulling that out. You can get a little bit. It's not quite as high output when you have the um, the, the 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 switch pulled out, so it's switching between series and parallel. <laughs> and also with the the dunk and pick up, it cleans up. <laughs> cleans up really nicely. What I'm going to do now is play through a few little excerpts of Van Halen for you so that you can hear the guitar in action. <laughs>
So hopefully you enjoyed those examples. Like I said, I, I wanted to just show you the Beretta because I have, have one of these in the studio. Slightly different headstock design. It's not quite as exaggerated. The Beretta has a little bit of a chunkier neck to it, which I, which I really like, actually. And obviously, we have the slightly offset pickup. So the pole pieces of the top strings are a little bit closer to the bridge. <laughs> A great guitar and again you can uh, pop up the uh, the volume control to switch between the um, the series and parallel <laughs> and once again the, the whammy bar is incredibly responsive <laughs> can drop that so the strings are literally hanging off the guitar so you know there's the difference between the two um it's just a great looking guitar these are just fantastic super strats but i think for me this is a little bit more subtle uh whereas the 84 is a little bit more striking with that uh that hockey stick headstock but uh yeah just to show you the differences between the visual differences between but essentially you know these are, are two they feel ever so slightly different because of the uh, the neck profile, but uh, essentially these are pretty much the same beast, if you like. I guess that the uh, the Beretta is just an evolution of the of what would have been the eighty four that fifty one fifty guitar. Okay, so there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the guitar. As I said, it is a rock machine. This is you know this is what you sign up for when you play this guitar. Um, I think if you're a Van Halen fan, if you're a Shred fan, whatever you're into in, in hard rock, this guitar is fantastic. I would like an opportunity to have a look at the Van Halen 5150 that they make, the EVH guitars. Obviously, that is heavily uh, altered cosmetically to resemble Van Halen. Um, I don't think <laughs> uh, Kramer would probably be too pleased if I started striping this, although I possibly will put an MXR style knob on it at some point. But I think this is a really striking guitar. Uh, the other thing I really like about this guitar is the price of it. I'm not here to sell this guitar. I just wanted to play it for you. But in comparison to the EVH one, this is kind of half the price. And uh, as I believe these are, I think the the the, 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 the parts are made in in uh, in Asia. I'm not too sure where, but the guitars themselves are constructed in America. It's a fantastic guitar. It feels great and it sounds great. So uh, yeah, there you have it. Like I said, I'm. Uh, this was just my thoughts on the guitar, and I just wanted to play some riffs for you. And uh, yeah, if you're in the market for something like this check this guitar out and if you're a Van Halen fan then uh, I think this guitar is a must. Anyway that's it from me. I really hope you've enjoyed this short overview and listened to some of the playing examples of the Kramer 84. I'm now going to go and play some more Van Halen on it and uh, I'll look forward to seeing you very soon for more videos. Bye for now.